Hi everyone, this is Diana from Cosplay Fame. We are at Megacon Tampa Bay, and we are actually in a cospital room. Um, I'm here joined by Crow and Jamie. Um, Crow, why don't you go ahead and explain, if you don't mind, if you and Jamie explain a little bit the importance. I noticed that you guys have pronouns on your name tags, if you could talk a little bit about that. Um. Well, a lot. Some of it is we do have a lot of staffers who identify um, as LGBTQIA. So some of them use pronouns like they them. Some of them may not appear that way to some people, but they use pronouns like she, her, hers, or something like that. So we just wanted to make our staffers feel comfortable, and then we also wanted people coming into the hospital to feel comfortable um, knowing that hey, there's a non-binary person there. Okay, I can feel comfortable here because I know I won't be discriminated against. Yeah, I ask because, you know, as cons become more popular and we want to focus on keeping safe spaces indeed safe, um, I think there's a little bit more of an opportunity here to educate people on pronouns and I'm learning about them now so bear with me, um, but um, aside from gender and uh, sexual orientation identification, um, why do you think it's just so important to make sure that, you know, especially young cosplayers coming in can come in here? Yeah, I mean, we want to make sure that uh, we want to keep cosplay as a fun hobby. Uh, this is just a place of really good self-expression as well, expressing uh, fandoms that you like, maybe learning certain things about yourself. And we don't want someone to be in a p position where maybe a bad in interaction where they've been judged in a c certain way is going to uh, uh, make their day bad, you know, make them feel bad. So, you know, here in the hospital, it's not just about... Um, making sure that your costume is not falling apart or anything like that, uh, but we want to just overall promote positivity in the hobby. This is for everybody. This is a hobby for everybody, regardless of your expression, uh, how you look, your physicality. You don't have to look like your character at all, you know, and so we want to reinforce that here as well. That's amazing. So how long has Cospital been up and running overall? <laughs> We are five years old, I would say, now at this point. Uh, go to kindergarten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we started as uh, a table in the hallway at Megacon Orlando. About that big. About that big. Uh, we were causing such a bottleneck in the hallway, people could not get in or out. So the next year I asked Megacon, uh, could we have more space? And they gave us a room. And they've had us back uh, every year since then. This is our second uh, Tampa, but we've done Megacon Orlando about five times. Sometimes we're on the floor, sometimes we're here. Uh, it just depends on the floor uh, plan of the specific uh, convention at that time. So we did see you at Megacon Orlando. How was your experience Orlando versus Tampa? Not versus per se, but in comparison. Uh -oh. This is a much quieter show. I mean, it, we weren't exactly sure what we were getting into because we did the show last year and it was just after the hurricane and not a lot of people had some spare money or they had to sacrifice their con money for hurricane preparedness or hotel rooms. So it was a bit of a sparse crowd last year. So we weren't entirely sure what to expect this year. Yeah, uh, I mean, at Orlando uh, this past May, we did about 2,500 uh, repairs. Uh, just because it's a larger, more established show, the venue's larger. Uh, I think this is still a younger show. Uh, there's a few c uh, schedule conflicts, uh, but we're already seeing it's grown a lot since, since last year. Uh, but on the scale, you know, we've done maybe a few hundred repairs at this show. But I mean, even just fixing one person, we've done some small shows where maybe 300 people show up and we've fixed about three people, but that made their day, you know, that, that kept them from going home early, going home disappointed that they've spent all this money or worked on this costume and then couldn't show it off. And also so. teaching because we show people different techniques on, okay, well, maybe attach the this way next time or try this kind of closure or don't use glue next time maybe stitch or rivet next time because those will hold better in Florida so we're if we can teach somebody so they don't maybe make the same mistake again yeah. that's also a bonus and, um, and when it's slower that gives us a little more one-on-one -on -one time with our patrons uh, yeah. so because uh, at large shows like Orlando we're mainly in triage mode and we're trying to get you in and out as quickly as possible for the next person here if someone wants to learn how to do a ladder stitch on their gloves we have the time to teach if they want to see me do some leather working uh, 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 examples we've got that opportunity as well so would you say that the medics here at hospital have a forte or does everyone kind of know general like a foundation in regards to costuming or does each person kind of have their one person does more leather work one person does more sewing 
Yeah, um, we started off uh, just a collection of cosplayers. So we all have our own specialties. So, you know, my partner's really good with EVA foam and soft fabrication, the sewing machine. I'm more on uh, um, uh, le leather working side using some of the more exotic glues. Uh, but most of us uh, are either professional or semi-professional costumers or have worked in theater, have worked at Renaissance festivals, and we've just all picked up different case. skills. But it's not just the fabrication skills that are important. We have one person whose sole job is to direct traffic. And they are very good at making sure people need to go where they have to go, uh, making sure that tools are put back, the room is set and clean, and there's nothing in the way. No one is going to step on a costume and accidentally break it while they're here. You know, while we have the tools to fix that, we don't want to see any more breakages on things. So that's a very important skill as well. So we've had volunteers who say, well, I don't know what I can do here. And we say, well, if you are good with people, uh, just use those good old customer s service skills and just make sure everybody uh, is chill and they know they're going to get handled and be right back on the floor again. Honestly, what we tell people is more importantly, if you're trying to, if you want to work hospital, you've got to have a good attitude that you're going to be potentially facing someone who's having a really bad day and has made some very bad decisions. And so you need to be humble and kind enough, kindness more than anything. I mean, you don't need to be nice, but you need to be kind. Yeah, we, we are seeing everybody a lot of times at their worst, their worst moment at the con, and then we want to make sure that the rest of the day is their, their, their best, you know? And so that does take a, a certain type of person that, you know, uh, knowing how to use a sewing machine is not going to teach you those type of skills. So just being sympathetic, like, listen, dude, I know what you're going through. We're, yeah. We'll get through this together. Yeah, we've all been there. You know, even those of us who've been cosplaying for years have had those, you know, fantastic blowouts where it's, you feel terrible that day, but then you laugh about that story, you know, about a year later or so, you know. Remember when all my armor fell right off onto the floor? Wasn't that funny? And you laugh now, but... Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Just real quick. For MegaCon Orlando, uh, I was Storm for one day, and I couldn't find my, I have the, the white-out lenses, but it's the iris that's whited out, as well as the mesh, mm -hmm. so you can't see anything. I had zero peripheral, and I was freaking out, and finally I was cleaning them, and they went, doop, just down the sink. <laughs> Thankfully, I was dating Raven, and he was able to, he's like, hey, there's this neat trick. You can actually pop out the pipe and to get it out. And I'm just like, you know what? I did Do it. I, I still have this point? eye, thankfully. I cleaned it for a long time throughout the day. But, you know, sometimes as a cosplayer, you make that decision. And I immediately was like, well, guess I'm going to be Sailor Moon instead. And, you know, you have those, what am I going to do? Let's think quick on my feet. Or some people don't think quick. Think quickly on their feet and they come to hospital and they say hey what can we do um so are you currently accepting volunteers yeah yeah absolutely. we do uh typically after every con we'll post an application on our facebook page uh, which is uh hospital cosplay repair um, we do have a core group that does go to most shows with us uh, smaller shows like this we're about six people uh, orlando will have up to 12 uh, and sometimes I might need someone like the week before the show because you know life happens uh, but we do like to get those applications in advance so that we can kind of get an idea of where to put you because we like our newbies to just work one day just to get a, a taste for what it's like because uh, you don't know what to expect we still don't know what to expect every day you know this is the con where I learned that AAA bat batteries are now the most popular thing you know sometimes the paint station is wildly popular sometimes it's not so we just like to, to gauge things some cons we will never use a sewing machine some cons I am stationed right there yeah. mm -hmm. yep so it's all just you know a little bit of trial and error and the same thing with our uh, ap applicants we want to make sure that they know they're gonna be here in this room most of the day you know uh, we try to make things as fun and as comfortable as possible you know we've got a little snack bar in the back behind us uh, we all have fun you know some of our volunteers professionally repair costumes five days a week you know over at Disney and then they come here to decompress and fix more costumes so I'm always grateful that our team seems to really enjoy this type of work. Um, so what have, what do you think you guys has been the most trial and error? Like what have you learned since year one to now year five? <laughs> and it could be a few things. <laughs> um, one of the blessings that we have started doing is we have the changing booth over there, which yeah, you can get dressed in there, particularly if you're gender non-binary and you need a comfortable place to get dressed. That's not the bathroom. Yeah. Um, you, we've had breastfeeding mothers breastfeed in there, but it's also a really good place to go if you've got a crotch blowout or a butt blowout that you can take off your suit and wait in there. 
Uh, it, because it used to be that the person would just have to bend over over the table, and I would have to just kind of pray they didn't fart in front of my face. Um, so yeah, uh, that's been a great improvement. And a lot too is we try to see like what the most popular characters are each year. Like Overwatch is wildly yeah. popular, and 3D printing, like the past two years, has just exploded yeah. on the scene and. Uh, with anything new, uh, you know, there's new techniques to learn. So we've learned what type of glues work for 3D printed props. You know, sometimes it's going to be the hot glue, but it depends on what type of plastic it's made out of. And what, what's being made out of yeah. it. And sometimes it's still a simple matter of some, du some du duct tape is going to get you through the rest of the day. So, you know, this, this scene is changing a lot as well. And, and with that, we have to learn, it because with any new cosplay technology that's starting to get into the market, people are learning too. Mm -hmm. So people don't quite know how to design their 3D props to withstand shearing or anything like that. Uh, when EVA foam first started becoming a thing, it was... How do I strap this to myself? Mm -hmm. You know, how do I seal this so it gets a good finish? Now that's a little bit more common knowledge, but five years ago that wasn't yeah, the yeah. case. Or like uh, Warbler is becoming uh, more oh, affordable yeah. to buy, but yeah. this is Florida and any yeah. thermoplastics are going to want to change, especially if you leave it in your car. So, you know, uh, us as Floridians have unique challenges too as cosplayers. I mean, it's all well and good. Like, we love Kamui, but Kamui lives in... Yeah. In Cam Camwe lives in Europe, where you, she doesn't have to deal with this kind of heat and humidity. Yeah, yeah. She's a she's a cosplayer who really pioneered a lot of really fine, amazing warbler work. But because she's in a much more northern climate, it's not a concern for her. Whereas people here will use her same techniques, and we have to can to reinforce it because just the heat works against us. Or or even um, and again another person I really admire is Punish Props, and their system of rigging armor. It's great, but again. And the second you bring it outside in Florida for any extended period of time, it's not really going to work because of the humidity. That, that glue is going to pop. So in regards, you guys have so many things from painting to sewing materials, building materials, leather work. How, what's the best system you've discovered in terms of organizing or packing everything? <laughs> I love labels uh, and I love bins. Uh, we take some pride in being one of the groups that has the quickest load in and load out times because things are in bins, little bins, and those little bins go in bigger bins. Uh, we have tried to, uh, I'm not going to say idiot proof, but stress proof uh, things like the tool board. You'll notice there's little silhouettes behind everything. So we know it's been uh, removed uh, so that it can be put back by anybody. So we can quickly scan the board and make sure that we have all the tools I mean, accounted for. Well, Dorian has the mm -hmm. And then we have a general rule of thumb where if two people ask for a specific tool or accessory, we'll try to buy that for next year. Uh, one thing on our shopping list for our next con is uh, enamel pin backs. Uh, enamel pins are becoming very popular or insignia for Star Wars cosplayers or Battlestar Galactica. And these pin backs don't lock and they sometimes pop. So we're going to buy bags of just the pin backs so that people can replace them before they, they lose their pins. Or get stabbed. Yeah. <laughs> I will definitely remember that because my Disney pin collections, I've lost so many of those rubber Mickey shaped mm -hmm. bags. Yeah. Um, so just real quick, just to kind of wrap it up. Um, so you mentioned you have a snack bar. We have a gender binary. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was about to announce like, hey, is anybody no, 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 wants we that? Not, we are not the con suite. Yeah, yeah, we do not have a food license to feed you. <laughs> uh, but aside that, um, aside if anyone not only has problems with their cosplay, is there any other reason that one could feel welcome at hospital? Yeah, I mean, I always say that we are uh, secretly or maybe not so secretly anymore an LGBTQIA plus uh, outreach uh, group. And we will even do things like if you need a bathroom escort, we will be happy to go with you to the, your, your, your bathroom of choice so that you feel comfortable there. Uh, we have sort of an unknown rule where if you feel like you're being harassed, 
uh, or if you have like a known creeper or a, a, a bully uh, and you can't find security, uh, we'll have you come over here in uh, an, an obscure location and we'll track down help for you. So we're sort of that kind of uh, second line of defense. If you just need to, to de decompress or if you're in a position where you need some help, we will get security and we will find that help for you. So again, we want to make sure that you're having your best time at the con in terms of your costume, your physical health. You know, we'll direct you to where first aid is if you have problems your emotional health, your energy. We want to make sure that you can last as long as you want to last uh, at the con. On top of it, if somebody, uh, quite a few people who work at Cospital are neurodivergent. So if you are having an anxiety attack, a panic attack, if you're having what we call a meltdown, if you're on the spectrum, you can come to Cospital and kind of focus because even though it can get hectic here we do try to be a kind of a bit of a center of calm worst comes to shove you can go into our changing room take a minute take a breath and then could be good to go mm -hmm. what are some quick tips you would give to anyone that might be coming to a con for the first time i've learned you know just through doing this so many times when you get close to the food court or the vendor alley it gets a little overwhelming so i usually try to step by near the bathroom for a little bit and then go back in but what are some tips you guys would have for anyone that's coming in at first time or at a convention um comfortable shoes yes have comfortable shoes have a bag uh, in that bag, have any of things you might need for toiletries, uh, a little snack, any of your uh, me medications, some aspirin. Those are the most common areas of fatigue. Someone will have a blister on their feet because they've never worn their, their uh, cosplay shoes before. So if you have room, put a pair of flats in your bag, put some sneakers in there, uh, and then instantly you'll feel so much better. Maybe you just need a quick aspirin. Uh, maybe you forgot, you know, uh, some of your personal uh, uh, su supplies. And don't feel like that's not, that's going to break character, you know, that you have a bag that doesn't match what the rest of your cosplay looks like. Don't sacrifice yourself, your health for your cosplay. Just take that bag off, put it next to you for your photos and then put it back on you know you want to be comfortable so don't again don't sacrifice your health uh, for the cosplay itself we all understand be healthy be happy here uh, the other thing is again with the shoes um, try to uh, I, as much as many of us will make our cosplay or finish our cosplay in our hotel rooms yeah. at our houses the <laughs> night before try to test everything out first because I mean I make this mistake still I, I should really heed my own advice, but uh, like Dragon Con last year, I spent half the con in the hotel room trying to rig my armor because I didn't test it out at home. So test out your stuff first. Yeah, I would say, uh, you know, people a lot of times ask me how do I become a better cosplayer? And my answer is I was going to be give yourself more time. Time to prototype, time to let that paint dry completely, <laughs> time to break in your shoes, time to test your rigging. And also, ultimately, and something that Jamie and I have been learning as we get a little older is, it's better just to say, you know what, I need more time on this, I want to do this right, I want to protect my money and my time investment, I'm not going to bring this cosplay. I'm going to bring a different one, or I'm going to just wear a cool, nerdy shirt and my pins. It's better to just say, know and have a good time and know you're going to look good than to do something untested. Florida is so convention rich <laughs> that there is always going to be another show in a few weeks that then you can debut that costume as. You know, uh, no one is going to look down at you for reusing a costume, for doing a casual or a punk or a fun version of a costume. We're all here. We're just nerds in funny clothes having fun. And if somebody does, screw them. <laughs> then come to hospital. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
this year, and then they were asking for people to help out, and it seemed like the thing to do, because most of my cosplays have had multiple hands, so it feels like time to give back. <laughs> So I feel like much like every hero, much like every anime character, every cosplayer has an origin story. I would love to hear the origin stories of Milo and Dorian right now. How you got into cosplay and what introduced you to these fine, wonderful people here? Let's start with Dorian. Okay. So I did. Going by letter. I'm going because he starts with D and I, you know, making a selection. So I started doing a little bit of cosplay in high school. Uh, got into a little bit more um, freeform costuming, things like that. Um, but what I'm really good at <laughs> is uh, Im improvisational fixes, which is probably the most important skill for this room. So I kind of, I'm the person who I see something and I fix it around the house. So I fix a lot of my own accessories and jewelry and things like that, my own clothing fixes. So I was like, okay, I'll come in and help out because that's what we need. Milo, how did you get started? Uh, I got started in cosplay when I was about 15, which was a long time ago. Um, I started off... No, no, it was not that long. It was, it was very, very recently. We're going to say it's very recently for the audience at home. <laughs> um, I started Gundam Wing cosplay back when Megacon, years ago, Anime Festival Orlando, years and years ago, and... Um, and I've been a theater kid since I was about six, so the two sort of went hand in hand. I drifted away from costuming for a long while, and I mainly do stunt work now, but the team I work for, we still build our own costumes. And uh, so, like I said, I met uh, Jamie and Crow for the first time at Dragon Con through the Critical Role fandom. So what made you feel like you needed to be part of this, that you need to volunteer and help out other cosplayers? What got you started? Let's go with Milo first. Um, so I have been costuming for a long time, but a lot of my costumes are multiple people's labor of love. So I know that I'm not great at leather work, so some of my pieces I'll have commissioned out or I'll have things 3D printed for me. No single one of my costumes is just me. And so when they, the call went out to, for volunteers, it seemed like I've had so many other hands in my costumes helping me out. It felt like the right thing to do to be somebody else's hand. It's very poetic almost. <laughs> Dorian, how about you? Mine's a little bit more simple. I didn't have anything planned for this weekend, and I like tinkering with things. That's probably my favorite thing to do. So props and things like that I'm very big on. But that's good. I, having idle hands and putting them to, I feel personally, such a noble cause is really awesome. Um, guys, Juan, thank you for your time here. Really quick, I gotta ask. Am I a little, I'm a huge Gundam Wing fan. Who was your? What was your Gundam Wing build? I have to know because uh, I don't know. Spoiler alerts for people who haven't seen a Ray Player one. When the, the guy turns into F Zero at the end of the movie, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> much nerd screaming. Yeah. Okay, so I will give you a hint. When I was a much younger man, I used to have chestnut brown hair down to my butt. Oh, I know this guy. Yeah. I love this guy here. I used to be one of my very first costumes ever was Duo Maxwell from Gundam Way. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Dorian, what's your favorite build? I haven't even asked you. Um, I actually haven't done very many recently. So yeah, I don't really do cosplay. Um, for me, I'm mostly just here to help out because I like fixing things. So let me ask though, if there were no barriers, there was no amount of monetary responsibility, what would your dream cosplay build if you would wa want to do it? Hmm. Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, trust me, I've seen very obscure ones. I saw Sheriff Brody from Jaws in, J in Last Megacon. They're all super obscure uh, and I love them all. Oh my god, probably, um, mm, mm. I have to, yeah, I've got to think about that. You're going to think about it? Okay, no worries. Oh, god. oh, Tachi. Oh, Tachi. <laughs> With the wings and everything and the LEDs. Yes. Yes. That's it. Kaiju and mech people. Why aren't there more kaiju and mech people out there? We need you out here. One of the best builds I ever saw was Dragon Con at the aquarium two or three years ago. She had done a kaiju ball gown. What? She had LEDs all 
down the spine. Her makeup was glow in the dark or was photosensitive oh, something. Oh my God. Just, just to let <laughs> our audience and the people here know how much I'm a kaiju fan. I've been dying. Our dream trip is to Japan and I'm dying. It's the main thing I want to do. I want to go to the Godzilla Hotel in Japan and Tokyo. It's very nice. Very nice. Spoilers, guys. You get a king size bed in your suite, and it's a Godzilla hand holding the bed. Yes! 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 Thank you. Guys, I really appreciate your time out here. Is there anything you want to plug? Do you have any social media followings? Or are you guys. Um, I mean, plug the hospital. It okay. needs to be more places. <laughs> this would have been wonderful when I first started cosplaying, and I was a wee bab who knew nothing and used hot glue for all my seams. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, just it's amazing that the, the work that, like, we're just helping out, but we've got Crow and Jamie who's lurking over there. The work that they do is just phenomenal, and we definitely need to see more of this in other places. Thank you guys so much for your time, and uh, remember, guys, follow Make Content Tampa Bay. Please, please reach out to these wonderful people who are cosplay. They need your help, all cosplayers out there around the world. Come, we need more good soul. I mean, good not souls. I mean, good like people, good striving for good things. Why am I saying good so many times? Back to you guys.